exhortation to the body. Amen. Because uh, Paul's been speaking. <laughs> you know, and uh, at the last moment, so God gave me this, and uh, I just want to give you a definition of exhortation, that it's the verb, and uh, the Greek is et etymology, Middle English, from the Anglo-French, exhorter, okay? Comes from the, dated way back to the 15th century, and it means to, uh, to insight by argument or advice, urge strongly, exhorting vo voters to do the right thing. So today, I want to exhort the body of Christ to bring you into a place where you can really challenge your heart. I think if we come to church and we don't challenge our hearts, we, we don't even come to church. And don't think, oh, the neighbor beside you, this is for them. This is first for, from the guy that gets it. Because, you know, I believe when you, when you give a word in this pulpit, I, I believe the decisions are made right here. I believe a line is drawn in the sand, and you got heaven, and you got hell, and there's no one between. It's, 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 that, it's that tight. There was no offense, folks. Hallelujah. And today I wanted to encourage you with the word. I want to just open up in prayer. It won't be long. I know the Swiss alleys. You guys are waiting to gnaw on that little, that little burnt bone, aren't you? Isn't that the best? I love it. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I just pray that the Holy Ghost can be here, God, and, and move amongst the people, Father. I pray that the people can empty themselves out right now of any problems that they have. They can lay aside the name of Jesus right now. I don't care if it's finances. I don't care if it's sickness. In the name of Jesus, they speak to the situation. They lay it aside. They give it to you because you say cast your cares upon you because you care for all. So right now, in Jesus' name, we lay it on your feet right now, oh God. And we ask, oh God, you take our sin and you cast it as far as the east is to the west, never to be remembered again in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Just a few points today. One of my favorite scriptures reading is Psalms 37, 1 to 8. <clears throat> Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So thou shalt dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Amen. Delight thyself also in him. And he shall give the desires of thy heart. Commit thy way unto him. Trust thou also in him. And he shall, give the, you know, he shall bring it to pass. Amen. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as a light. And thy judgment as the new day. Here's, here's one here that a lot of us are. Going on to the twelve disciples. Three were close. One was closer. John. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. And fret not thyself because of of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass, cease from anger and forsake wrath, and fret not thy, th thyself in any wise to do evil. Hallelujah. The word fret, we all fret, we all have fret, we all worry, we all we all get our eyes off the Lord. All of us, every one of us is, we, we, you know, I, I, don't, I believe until you get to heaven then you're, then you're made perfect. But we all go through situations that, that make us make our eyes come, get off the king. Everyone experiences it. Peter did. Jumped out of the boat. His eyes right on him. Boom. Took his eyes off him. He's, he's up to his neck in water. Which resembled, you know, the, the, the world's sins. The world's life going on. And, and uh, you know, downfalls. And, and so on and so forth. But yeah, he looked, then, he took, then he put his eyes back up on Jesus. And we all know the story. Could you imagine walking on water? Picked him back up. And there he was walking, but he's looking right in his eyes. And the only way that, that fret in our life can disappear is we get our eyes on Jesus. And that is what I want to encourage you to do today. I want I want to stir your hearts in the name of Jesus Amen. that we get our eyes on God, get them off man, get them off our situations, and we learn to fly as he is. We learn to mount up on wings and soar. And then we'll learn to walk in the Spirit. That when things are going on right in front of us, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. If you've got your eyes on Jesus, guess what? Your spirit, those that worship me, worship me in spirit and truth, they all of a sudden start to rise. Your situation goes down here. You walk up and above it. You're walking over it. You're going in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. 
my unsaved one, my daughter, my, my, my son, whatever, whoever is not saved, they're going to come. They're under your feet. In the name of Jesus, the situation's under your feet. Under your feet, excuse me. Hallelujah. So we got to learn not to fret. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Everyone runs into evildoers. I don't care if it's a person at work. I don't. Sometimes I don't care if it's your husband or wife. You know, ouch. <laughs> but we all do things that we shouldn't be doing. You know, like there's all all the time we come in contact with evildoers at different levels. There's you know, evildoers, and we're not to be envious against the workers of iniquity. Well, that word iniquity is pretty strong. When I look at iniquity in the Bible, there's three levels of sin. There's sin, transgression, and iniquity. That word iniquity, you don't go anywhere any lower than that. When you hit that iniquity, you're on, you're on very, very, very shallow ground with God. Right. Because you can get to a point where that iniquity grows and you may not return. The Bible says, maybe not even, in Hebrews it says, maybe not even the Holy Ghost can do that. When you get to that point. But we're not to look at those kind of people and long in our heart to be like them or to want them or to want the things they have. We have to keep our eyes on God and know that in Him is everything. You know, what we think, what we think, you know, is, is prosperous. God doesn't want no part of it for you. He says it's only going to rust. Amen. Stealers are going to break in your home. That's why you have alarm systems. You know, we have one. They break in the home and they steal it. Don't build your kingdom here, church. Right. Build it up there where they cannot even come in. Hallelujah. Right. Right. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, pray for the salvation. Okay, a side note, evildoers. Um, basically, it's just one who does evil. That's all. That's the interpretation. There's one who doesn't want to do anything that God wants to do. And Jesus says, if you're not for me, you are. Okay. And against me. I have an unsaved brother. I have witnessed to him. You know, you can only witness people so long and so much. It's, it's better to live the life that you see. Yes. Amen. Because really and truly, at the point when I told him about Jesus, I was very zealous in my faith. He didn't want to hear it. You know, but after he's watched my life and he's watched us go through a few things and, and uh, in our family, and he's, he's really to see him slowly changing. Mm. And that, that, that's just because, that's just God. I mean, like, we just we just need to, uh, we, if you have a loved one, just need to live it in front of him. Don't even talk so much to them, but just live it. I encourage everyone just to just to live it. Hallelujah. And I, and I when I think about when I think about envious against the workers' iniquity, like I I have always had a little thing against the mob movies. Love the mob movies. But that's exactly what I was envying in my heart at that time. Like I like the Sopranos or the language. But I like I always like I always thought, wow, they're pretty cool. <coughs> but they're anything but cool. They're anything but what I should be watching. Because they are they are they are true workers of of iniquity. And uh, I, I call sometimes the government uh, uh, the, the white horse too, um, the white knights. I call them in, in my own uh, opinion, because many times they're like they wear they wear the tie and the white shirt and they do they, they do what they want to do and they get away with it. So it's like they're the they're, they're, you know in a way they're like they're, they're part of a mob you know they're a sect you know. Hallelujah. Amen. <coughs> Our commission in this scripture is to trust the Lord. This is Susan has highlighted you know, uh, in her testimony. We we're to trust the Lord. That was the first one. There's trust, delight, commit, and rest. We're to trust the Lord. Hallelujah. He's the only one in the scripture that says, trust me. Amen. No one else says that. We all, we all know people that we do trust, but they've let us down. Every one of them. You know? I gotta trust my mom and dad, but they let me down. You know? I trust people in high positions, but they let you down. There's only one church, that one, and not one church, church, there's only one that won't let us down. King of kings, the Lord of lords, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. When it talks about delight thyself in the Lord, why? Why does he want us to delight? When I look at King David, he delighted himself to the point where he is embarrassed his wife. He was happy whom he was serving. And he got excited, he got naked, and he danced. Let's not do that. <laughs> but I'm saying, you know, it's scary. But he did. He had like a little diaper cloth on, and he got excited. He danced before God. He delighted. I believe he was doing incredible worship. Incredible worship. You know? And, and the wife didn't like it at all. I believe Job delighted. 